I've said this time and time again, cell prep reading is one of the hardest modules. And if you can understand how to deal with vocabulary, skimming through, getting ideas, interpretation, and all these things, basically, if you focus on six main things in cell prep reading, this will completely solve your issue and you will guarantee a score of 10 or more. So we're gonna look at the first thing, which is memory when it comes to reading. I'm gonna also talk about each part. So let's talk about part three. Part three is where you have to match the paragraphs with the questions if you already don't know that. Now here, you don't have to match headings. Please remember that. A lot of people come from IELTS and they're confused. So what they do is they look at three, four, for example, and they look at a paragraph and try to find the main heading and try to match the main heading or the central idea with the questions. Please don't do that. The point of this exercise or this part is if this question about park visitation is being discussed, that part, if the answer is in D, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here, it could be here. It does not have to be the main idea. It could be in any part of the paragraph. So you need to read the whole paragraph. So of course, if you have looked at our previous videos, the strategy you need here is you look at all the questions first, one to nine, then you go to paragraph A, you read it, understand it, come back and match, then look at paragraph B, and then come back and match. Now, I've discussed multiple things here, paraphrasing and all those things, and we'll cover that a little bit later. But what I wanna emphasize right now is the importance of memory. Cause you're gonna be reading questions one to nine, you're gonna be reading A, the whole paragraph, then you're gonna try to come back and match. You will not remember a lot of the words and phrases that went missing. You might remember something about park visitation and you might be looking at it right here. But by the time you are at this part, you forgot the words park visitation and then now when you come back, you don't even match it correctly. Hence, practicing memory is very important. This advice is gonna be useless if your exam is in a week or lesser. If you have more time, you have to train your brain to get ready to memorize a lot of things. And there's multiple ways to do it. Here's what I recommend. First of all, you need to have mock tests with you. If you don't have mock tests reflecting the real exam's difficulty, check them out in the description. In our course, you get five almost real exam-like mock tests that reflect the real difficulty. So when you look at these mock tests, you can look at parts one, three, and four, not two, because two is a picture. And what you wanna do is, once you answer the questions or before, look at A, B, C, D, read everything. At the end, go back, and before reading A, tell yourself what you remember. Then repeat this for paragraph B, repeat this for paragraph C, and then read it and see how many things you missed. You'll be surprised at how many things you miss. Think about it, if your memory is good, you will instantly see a paragraph and you will say, oh, this part was mentioned in question number two, and that part was mentioned in question number five, and so on. So first, you would avoid the struggle of scrolling up and down, which wastes time, and you would also be more accurate in your answers. You will also be faster in the time and remember, time is very fast in the self breathing exam. So practicing memory is a little bit long-term, but it improves after a week of practice right away. So it doesn't take long to see results, but this is one skill that is something people often miss because it's hard, but trust me, you practice this and you will be very fast in your self breathing Now let's talk about paraphrasing. Paraphrasing is where examiners look at the questions, use their thesaurus, change the words, and then put them in the paragraphs they also change sentences, they also change concepts. So you will not find mostly the same things that are said in the question in the paragraphs. But if you have two ways to improve your paraphrasing, you can always identify the same things being said and you can find where the question is being discussed. So the first thing is looking at the question and paraphrasing that. So I got part four, I have question number two, for example, what did Nadine Barrow observe about her clientele over the last decade? Option one is they more often and rely on international market expansion. Now let's stop here. If you can find this exact sentence in your paragraph, you win, right? This is the answer, but it's not gonna be said like this. It's gonna be said maybe instead of saying they more rely on international market expansion, they might say the reliance is completely on outside markets, or we need broader markets and that's where we need to depend, or our dependency is just completely on things outside the local area. What I just did here is I found multiple ways to paraphrase this sentence. I'm gonna do the same thing with this, this, and this. 
Then I'm gonna do the same thing with the next few questions. So right here, I'm not trying to go back and find the answer. I'm trying to improve my paraphrasing skills. So if the examiner says something different than what is mentioned here, I will be able to spot it because my mind is thinking of 10 different variations. And remember, most likely 90% of the times, they will say something different than what is mentioned here. So it's a no brainer, you have to train your mind to paraphrase. Similarly, once you are done with sentences, the next thing you wanna paraphrase is entire paragraphs. So you would read it quickly, you don't need to read everything because we're practicing here. We're practicing our skill of paraphrasing. You read this whole paragraph, you can pause the video and try doing that, and then paraphrase it. Try to say this whole thing in a separate way, in a different manner. You gotta summarize a little bit of information too because you can't remember everything. And this is how whatever is paraphrased, whether it's the paragraphs or the questions, you'll be able to spot it. That brings me to an excellent lead-in, which is my next point, summarization. So once you're paraphrasing and summarizing the paragraphs, you're already working on the skill, but you also need to, whenever you have time, read articles, read newspapers, read any article which is academic. And what you wanna do is read a bunch of paragraphs, maybe 2,000 words, then summarize it. Summarize it, not in writing, but in your head, because you wanna practice doing this in your head. Summarizing helps you paraphrase it, it helps you interpret what was said, it helps you define the story from your own angle, and that all in total helps you with comprehension. And that's what we're doing in reading, we're trying to comprehend. With each part, this skill will help you. So this is something you wanna practice on the side. Summarizing the whole content, it will make your sharp skills even sharper when it comes to comprehension. Fourth thing is self-hip reading vocabulary is getting harder. People are struggling because of the words. They can understand everything, but not the words. And that's how they're getting all the questions wrong. In fact, in multiple choice questions, in one of the options, they're gonna put a difficult word that you might not know. So the best way to practice vocabulary is with word lists. There's another way too, but let me talk about word lists first. There's a link in the description, check it out. It says 400 best self-pip words. Once you click on it, it's gonna bring you here. These are the common words that are repeated in reading and listening in self-pip. They're also very important for you to know, so you can use them in writing and speaking. Memorize them. Again, this does not work if your exam is tomorrow, but when you have time, practice as many of these as possible. Vocab lists are the guaranteed and the best way to improve your marks. The other way is, again, when you're practicing reading, going through the difficult vocabulary you have and going and checking out their meanings. Our mock tests, again, in the course in the description, they include difficult words similar to what is used in the self up exam, and that will be a phenomenal practice for you. But what you can also do is when you're practicing reading, check out the words that you already know, put them in thesaurus.com, put this one, put this one, put this one. Check out the different ways that the examiner could use those words. This will train you for reading, but it will also teach you new words, which are synonyms, and you can use them in your writing and speaking and make that better as well. So don't ignore the importance of vocabulary. The next big thing, which is often ignored, but a lot of questions come from this area is interpretation. Interpretation is questions where you get asked how did this person react? What did this person say? How does this person feel about the response of the other person? And these questions come mostly in parts one and four. So in part one, you have a letter, right? And in part four, you have two different or three different people fighting about something, discussing viewpoints. In this case, if I'm looking at my part one, there is Dear Jenny, the letter is being written to Jenny and Sarah is the one writing the letter. I'm gonna read this. At the end, I'm gonna question myself about their relationship. How are Sarah and Jenny related? What was their past interaction like? What does this letter tell me about their informal nature or for formal nature? How do I perceive they're gonna respond to each other the next time they meet? And guess what? All these questions are gonna help me when I look at the response letter. Because once I get an idea of their relationship and how they talk, I will know how they will respond. In part four also, there's a comment, there's a next part where the person looking at the article responds. Now, if I know that person's intention, how they think, how they perceive, how their, their attitude is towards the initial conversation, I'll be able to answer those questions really well. So in parts one and four, don't just look at the paraphrasing, don't just look at the answers to the questions, but look at the tone, the positive, the negative feeling, this will give you a lot of marks if you get those questions right. 
The final thing, and this is only for part two, is your skill of skimming. In part two, there's not much paraphrasing going on, there's not many strategies you need, but you need to be really good at skimming. You get a picture, sometimes it's color, sometimes it's not. In this case, this one is more like a brochure. You have snow passes, night pass, one night per week pass, as well as the costs. Now here, you don't have to look at the keywords, you have to just get an overall idea. And that is gonna come with skimming, which is moving your eyes quickly, getting the main idea from each part. For example, in this case, I'm gonna look at winter pass. It's unlimited and uh, you have free access to a lot of things, a bunch of things, and you have a bonus. Great, okay, so it looks good. Night pass, as the name suggests, it only it's only for a night, and it is only after 4 p.m. It includes every evening access to a few things, so it's not free access, it doesn't have bonuses, it's only for a limited time. This is what I'm telling to myself in my brain. One night per week pass even looks more limited because it's one night per week, it's after 4 p.m., and there's one bonus, just one night per week pass, receive a bonus night, so another night, and uh, there's not many activities listed here. So I'm thinking how I'm understanding this is, this is the best one, this is the second best, this is the third best. I'm kind of coming to some conclusions in my brain as well. Then going with this table here, we can see the rates. Winter pass is more expensive than this, than this. First glance, that's what I see. I can also see the family passes with four people is are probably cheaper than adults. For example, if I have four adults, I can see youth is cheaper, child is cheaper, and so on. So that's it. That's skimming. It's less than a minute or two. And with that idea, I'm going to jump into the questions because I don't want to read it and look at it for a longer time. The time is limited. But this is your skimming skill. You can answer the questions and later on come back and look at how many things you missed. But if you perfect the skimming skill, it is basically reading at a very fast rate and getting as many pieces of information as you can. For part two, it is extremely useful. And that's it everybody, these are the skills you need to work on, they do require time, but if you do them, you can ensure a great reading score and no more struggles. If you do wanna check out our mock tests, we have five of them, really challenging, reflect the real exam difficulty level with answers and explanations in those answers, which you will never find anywhere else. Check them out in the description. Please like, share, and subscribe, we'll talk soon, take care.